Okay, so so I've been going over a couple of the other algorithms for, for joining uh, spatially, joining data by spatial location. And there's actually an, a better way to, to, to actually run that spatial join. So, so the one that I did is I, I created a polygon layer and then joined um, the overlapping layers. But we actually didn't need to do that. There's actually a better way. And you know, in GIS, there's usually more than one way to do something. And there are better ways of doing things as well. So we're all learning here. So let's just see uh, and show you how that, that other option works. So it is it's still a join. But uh, you, if you watched the previous video, I mentioned that um, I didn't want to join to the nearest. I wanted to join the, those that overlapped within 20 meters of my, of my, my feature. But you can actually do that in this algorithm. There is a setting for distance. So what we can do is say join by nearest. And we want the input layer that we're going to join layers to to be the, the Chimmy T layer. Now, I'm choosing this one because it is has been reprojected to UTM zone 35 south, which is in meters. So currently, uh, choosing a, an EPSG of 4326, which is in decimal degrees, it wants the, uh, the input maximum distance to be decimal degrees. So I'm choosing the one that's in meters. Okay, so now we'll be, we'll be able to type in that value of 20 meters here. So instead of buffering, we're just adding that distance into the algorithm. So we are attaching data from the Amazi water wells, that's correct, onto that uh, new uh, geo package layer that we created. And we can create a little join prefix so we know which, um, which columns came from the this, this layer. We'll change this distance to 20. And then we can run and create a temporary layer. So we can run that. And then close that. And if we have a look at the attribute table of this join table, and scroll across, you can see our new columns. There we go. And then let's just sort on these. And there's 30, well, there's 20, yeah, there's 30 joins, which is exactly the same as the, the previous little query that we ran. So a, a probably a better way to do it, using that um, joining by nearest algorithm, that basically cuts out that step of having to create a polygon um, so that it, this is probably a, a, a far more efficient way of doing something and what it, it has also done is it has told us how many in fact this is probably critical to our little query it's told us how many um, points actually lined up with that particular join so in this instance we've actually got two so this is a potential issue so if we just have a look at that one there will obviously be two uh, wells that are within 20 meters of the the feature that we were looking to join on. So let's just zoom to that layer, this one here. So you probably find that these these two points are within 20 meters. Let's just quickly uh, turn on our Google imagery. Turn that off. It's possible that, that, that these are the same features. It's, I think it's highly unlikely that we're going to have two wells this close to each other. But let's have a look anyway. Like I said, four meters and two meters. So, so it's a good way to identify where there are potential issues. Um, more than likely, one of these is uh, either an old or collapsed well, or it actually uh, should be in a different place. So that would be up to you to, to figure out. So I'll turn that off go back to our attribute table there was another one that was also within within 20 meters so let's go back to to that column there so it is this one down here let's have a look at this one oh that is the one we looked at okay i think that is the one we just looked at okay so never mind all right so you see how that that little algorithm is actually quite a good one to use as well and the other thing that it does is it does give you the distance of that nearest feature. So the maximum distance was 18. Obviously, there'll be nothing over 20 because that is the, the condition that we set. And then the closest one is within one meter. So I would use this option. It, it seems to be a, a better option than the other one. But, you know, it's always worth uh, looking at the various options that you do have. You may have occasion to use the other option instead of using this one. So, yeah. Um, pick which one suits you the most and uh, yeah, the last thing we wanted to do there actually was just export that 
say feature as Excel spreadsheet. I think I al already called it join tables, but let's call this one spatial join. Oh gosh, spatial join, save. And okay, so now we have two tables. Okay, so you just need to go and check out if there were um, areas or or wells that uh, fell within uh, 20 meters of two other features and then just sort out which one to use. Okay, so good luck with that. Let me know how it goes. Cheers.